This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So joined now by uh, Keir McGrath and Eddie O'Sullivan to look back on the senior and intermediate quarterfinals over the weekend. We have four left now in the uh, senior and intermediate. But just before we do that, there was obviously a bit of news today that Joe Kenny of Curvin is going to be joining the Mayo backroom team. Um, Gizzy, another Curvin man who just seems to have a grow for Mayo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look at Mayo, lucky to to have my lucky enough I'm good friends with Joe. Uh, uh, like Joe himself was a great footballer. Um, regardless of his size, uh, he was he was all he was a great footballer for Curvin down through the years and. When he went into coaching in Curfin, uh, like I mean, he, he's very good, very knowledgeable, um, and he'll be a huge asset to me. And I'm sure anyone that'll be talking to Brendan's lads, I'm sure they found him very good as well. So, uh, yeah, another Curfin man to I suppose we'd we'd look on Rochester as being one of our own too. So it's 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 getting harder and harder now to support to to not support me a bit, but um, yeah, hopefully it'll work out for him. It's definitely it's definitely a positive moved by the Mayo management bringing him in. What does he bring as a coach, Gizzy? Uh, Joe just has a great knowledge of the game, I suppose, which helps. He was, As I said, he was a great player himself um, and a great forward. Like, he was a great ball winner. He had great hands. Like, he, if you kick the ball to Joe, it's it always stuck, high or low. And if you made a run off Joe, uh, you always, he always, he was like Ian Burke. He had, he had great hands. He could release you. Um, but just when he like Joe's very organized, um, very meticulous in what he does. So like Joe, there'll be nothing left to chance with Joe when he turns up to train and on a Tuesday night or whatever. It it it's it's something that he's put together days in advance or weeks in advance or months in advance. It's not a case of he's turning up, uh, thinking before he goes out on the pitch what am I going to do with these lads? So he'll 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 be well prepared. Uh, and I think from Joe's point of view, I think he was probably ready to go to that level, and he just needed an opportunity, and he's he's got it now. So I think um I think it's a great it's a great opportunity for me, but it's a great opportunity for Joe as well. Um, but yeah, he sure look he played a big part in our trainer over Curfin as 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 one of the main coaches, so he knows the game better than anyone. Are you just finally are you surprised to see this move, and do you think Rochford's had an influence on it? Ah, uh, no doubt, Roch had a big influence. Um, like these guys, these guys have the same, I suppose, mentality around football, and often are caught up in conversations. I suppose, given that both are involved in management, I've no doubt that uh, away from the game, they'd probably be a be in contact on the phone or, or meet up or whatever and would have chatted through the game and I'd say they'd have the same outlook uh, about the game so uh, is it a surprise it's not really um, it's not really because too many teams go for a big name and there mightn't be any substance behind the big name then you know so there's no doubt that Joe's an excellent coach and has a great knowledge of the game and um, his ability to analyze games and and put that in into training is second to none as well. So, uh, I think I think it's a great appointment by Mayo, and uh, it's just a pity Goa didn't look at it maybe before Mayo got there. That'd be what everyone would be saying now if if there's success in Mayo this year. But, uh, as well, last week we were touching on with St Michael's. They've obviously took the appeal further now to the DRA and. One man who's going to be supporting St. Michael's, I presume, is Uchtarad's Eddie O'Sullivan. Well, the one thing I'd say, Paul, as I said earlier, my uh, my support will win as the days have progressed since we last trained. Uh, <laughs> two weeks out from championship now, the fitness is starting to fall away quickly. So so is the support for any any appeal. But no, listen, uh, obviously, best of luck to someday. Obviously, see there's a, a big case to take it to the DRA. Um, whether there is or not, I suppose that'll be decided tonight by, by the DRA. But you you don't take an appeal that far lightly, so they they really think there is there is a cause for it. And I suppose if you're drawn into the relegation battle as they were, as opposed to what would have been a preliminary quarter final, you're you are going to be that bit more uh, I suppose concerned about 
how the rule impacts you. Just overall, because you were affected a bit by the confusion as well. Uh, your own club were just saying that on social media after the tables had it up because it obviously had the tables with the new scoring difference, but obviously go were clear that they were going with the old uh, scoring difference uh, system. How did you kind of react to it as players when there was that bit of confusion? Uh, when we were out in the out in the pitch, uh, we were kind of I suppose the big teams were very cognizant of because we only drew the game. We probably weren't getting through, um, and generally I suppose generally there was a bit of a confusion, but word was trickling through that it was going to be the old system. So we were waiting on the results I suppose to come through. Just wondering what. Barron and Kerfin were at because we we're kind of hoping Kerfin might get another goal and that would have put us through as well. Um, but yeah, listen, by I suppose by the time we were back in the dressing room, we were fairly, we we're probably 75% sure that that was the end of it. But it was funny because we we're, we we're kind of half planning the night out the Saturday night, but we weren't too sure because um, we played on the Thursday and like lads had worked and whatever on Friday. Uh, but we weren't too sure even Saturday morning whether we could kind of progress with it. Um, and in the end, I think around three o'clock, we said we'd just go with it. That more than likely we weren't going to be playing the following Tuesday in a preliminary quarter final. Like, so um, yeah, there was a bit of confusion. But I suppose from our point of view, um, there was a certain satisfaction when we put in a good performance in our last group game. We weren't drawn into the relegation mire, and everything else was going to be out of our own control at that stage. So we didn't really concern ourselves too much after that, one way or another. How do you reflect we, on your season? We, we actually organized training was actually planned for the following Tuesday now, right? But I don't know to go ahead. Um, <laughs> so well, just on. just on your own season with Luke Dredge, a, a lot of people had kind of tipped you to come out of the group. Do you, do you reflect a bit as a like how how do you reflect on the season? Would you say it's a good season or how do you react to it? Um, I suppose it, it was uh, probably a progressive season from our point of view. Um, like large chunks, it was very, very good. We, I suppose, we were in a lower league, but we were once we we started training really hard around May June, and once we did, we were very comfortable in winning that league. Um, and then we got off to a, a great start against Carrigan. The first fifty-five minutes, we were flying, fell away completely in, in injury time to load him back into the game, which was a bit disappointing. And then Barna, like that, we were in a very kind of I suppose dogged game. We were leading before going into the last 40 seconds of injury time, let that slip. But then, like, we we put in a, a performance against Kerfin and we Kerfin had come back at us to go four up, but we still we pegged them back to two points in injury time and could have felt had we made better decisions on the last few plays when we turned them over, we could have eked out the draw. And then, we, in the end, we came away with a three point defeat, which for us would have been huge progression over the last few years. Um, then I suppose we let ourselves down with a very poor showing against Clannan. And that ultimately is what cost us our place in the championship. Uh, and I suppose that's probably why we probably aren't so upset, say, with a rulings this way, a rulings that way, is because we let ourselves down by not producing performance against Clannan. Like so, you know, we've ourselves to reflect on and look back at that. And then we produced a performance against Salt Hill that was probably already beating them. So, like, when you reflect back over over the championship, some good, some bad, probably compared to the other previous years, far better consistency of performance within games, um, especially against the top top teams. Like last year against Carpin, it was just damage control for the whole thing. Whereas like this year we pressed kickouts, you know, we tacked hard when we could. Like, Joe, you know, that's that's progression for us. So like what we'd be looking to do is hopefully we can keep the same group of players, the same management and you know, build on that for next year. But yeah, I suppose that's, there's no straight answer to that, Paul, but I suppose we'd be slightly on the positive side, I'd say. Was losing Maddie a bit of, bit of a blow? Um, yeah, and of course, like losing Maddie before the Salt Hill game is massive because you're there facing into the Salt Hill game and it's basically if we if we win, Salt Hill go into relegation. If we lose, we go into relegation. So like, you're you're very apprehensive about a game like that without Matthew. But like we, we had played a large proportion of the year without Matthew and Ryan and we played the Carol Strand game without both of them. So we probably are used to used to playing without them. And so it's yeah, not great. I suppose the one the one thing I'd probably say from the outset then with regards to expectations and that, like, you know, you you'd have hoped probably a quarter final 
at, at least, but then you're kind of banking on maybe just beating the three teams and maybe only producing decent performance against Curfin and Salt Hill. So we probably outachieved against, I suppose, the perceived bigger teams and probably underachieved slightly against what are perceived to be weaker teams. But when you look at a lot of the other games, a lot of the other clubs seem to be in a similar scenario. Just on the uh, senior quarterfinals that we had yesterday, uh, it was really good quality across all four games. Uh, two points, the biggest uh, winning margin for any team. So all four games really went right down to the wire. And we, and that probably did lead to the excitement yesterday, Gizzy. Yeah, I'm, I I was at the Curfin and Chung game and uh, look at probably panned out the way I expected it to pan out where every any time, especially in recent years, Chum and Curfin play it's a cagey affair. Um both teams just don't want to to give the other side maybe a three or four point lead. They want to keep it within one or two. And that's that's what seemed they all very much like basketball. They all attack together and all defended to together and both teams seemed happy enough at halftime just to keep it at five all. Um Curfin had a goal chance Dylan Wall, I think, just before half time. And it, you would think if if either Chum or Curfin got a goal, um, they'd go on and win it. But, uh, yeah, sure. Look at the difference probably in it in the day was two key players for Curfin, especially Liam Silk was outstanding. I thought, especially in the second half, um, he's really back to where he was before he left for New Zealand, and then Mike Farrell came on and made a big difference for uh Curfin just. It makes a big difference when you're under pressure in your kick out and uh, you have a player that can come on and just catch a kick out. It makes it look very simple. And then he caught one kick out and I think he said Tony Gill uh, away. And I don't think Tony fist that one over. But especially when Chum seemed to be pressing Bernie, I, I noticed Gary O'Donnell used to play maybe 30 yards ahead of Tony Gill. It's very hard for Bernie to get kick outs away. And Mike just came on and um, gave him that option. And... Uh yeah, look at it as a curve in supporter going in there. Once you beat them, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be overly pretty. Once you beat them, that's the main thing. Um, and I was happy that they just got over the line. But honest, it really felt like Tony Gill came of age yesterday. Uh, because he, I think it was three points he finished with, but like he really did step up for curve in at key stages yesterday in that game. Yeah, especially in the second half. Um, I think just the. Uh, Gary O'Donnell seemed to give him a lot of room. Uh, Chum obviously had a tactic. I don't know. They were trying to press curve in high up. And it just meant that it gave Tony a bit of space to get in behind him. And in fairness, he, yeah, I think he got three points off the back of that. So in curve in, we're a long time waiting for him to come now because we need we need young, fresh uh, blood coming through like every other club. But um, Tony Gill was always a prospect that we just want to make sure that did come true because he was a fine underage player but uh, Patrick Egan looks good Jack McCabe had a good first half tired I thought in the second half but um, they're they're three nice uh, additions to what had been there previously so um, that's that was good to see and it was good to see Tony he's been there two or four years ago it was good to see Tony uh, make an impact for Curfin. he can get better I'd imagine like in the first half he was quite but second half very good and, and, and hopefully he can push on now on the back of that it's uh, Dara said Dylan Canny out your injury yesterday, Eddie, and you kind of just maybe looking at Curfin's inside forward line and you're thinking, is there an opportunity here for Tune? But then, like, you're looking at that Curfin bench and they're just bringing on lads who are making it stronger and stronger in that second half. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, like I said there before we came, before we started recording, there was like, even compared to when we played Curfin in the group stages, like, they're their bench was was so much stronger, like even fresher. Like Mike Far even came on against us, and you know he he scored a nice point, but Joe you know, he was wasn't he, it wasn't Mike that came on yesterday. No, he was flying yesterday, and Michal Lundy came on, and I I thought it made a bit of a difference. But like likes of McCabe and Patrick Egan and these lads, like we've probably played a good bit against the new cohort between league and intermediate league this year, and. Uh, the group game and yeah they're they're very very good players and um, like uh, probably yourselves and james is probably out all the quarter finalists had the i suppose the freshest faces added to a, a blend of older lads like obviously Cloud Galway have all fresh faces but 
like those two clubs really have a have a good match good match of young fresh talent and I suppose older statesmen. Did Tume not fully take advantage Eddie when Gavin Burke got that black card in the first half? No, not really. Not really, you know, in a way, but it can be very difficult because you're when a team gets a black card against you, that team straight away knows that they're just killing they're killing ten minutes. Like that's that's probably their objective. So you your players, your teammates probably feel under under pressure to get hold of the ball and to try to get a score and force the score. Whereas the team that kind of often gets the black card, Joe, they know keep possession, kill the clock. And often, often you know, it didn't happen yesterday, but they often pick off a score themselves, which really puts the other team under pressure. So it can be can be the case. Usually, if if it's an open, I would say rip roaring game, usually the team that gets the black card it really impacts them. Whereas when I suppose when it's a slower, more methodical game like yesterday's, the black card probably isn't as uh, acutely felt by the team that gets it. And did you think Kervin did anything different in the second half, Kizzy? Um, no, I, th- I thought in the first half they were like uh coming out of defense. I they needed more bodies to break the line. I think that coming out of defense, they tended to go out the wings a good bit, and then lads got isolated out in the line. And that's not that's has never been the curve in way, I suppose. Um, and even if a lad tried to run it down the middle, he like Hash Egan a couple of times took it on, and then he becomes very isolated, and it, it's you're just you're running into two or three tune bodies. But in the second half, they didn't do as much. I thought uh, Liam Silk obviously broke the line a few times in the second half very well. Um, and Connor Cunningham broke the line once or twice in the second half very well. Um, and you're going to need that. Sometimes uh, you're just going to have to see a gap and go for it. Um, but too many times in the first half, Corrafin left lads isolated and especially out near the sideline. And it played into, it played into Tune's hands. Um, and just with the black card, Tune, I, the way Tune have played the last few years, they're never going to be a high scoring team. I think they kind of go on, they pride themselves on what they do at the back. I think they keep teams uh, to relatively low score and then um, they tend to win it by one or two themselves. But yeah, they probably had an opportunity. They needed to take that. They probably needed to go in at half time, two points up, uh, given the curve in, we're down 14 men for that 10 minutes before half time. It felt like that towards the end as well, Eddie, just because Tume obviously played Bairn at Tuesday night and you could tell maybe some of the shots they took on towards the end. There, Gary O'Donnell goes for one and it just goes up in the sky and, and it was kind of tired bodies towards the end just when they were kind of chasing that game, trying to get themselves back into it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's uh, like it's part of the reason when you are know, saying earlier about the appeal, like, Obviously, if you're playing Michaels, you're both probably coming into the game, you know, with different mindsets. But it's very difficult, say, for Barnet to go from playing the Thursday to the following Tuesday, both midweek championship games. Because, like, I don't know about younger lads, but when you're of a certain age and you play a midweek championship game, like, you're not falling asleep till probably 2 or 3 a.m. You're back up for work at 6 or 7. Like, you're you're running behind there for the week and not getting your recovery. As much as you try, you're, you're not going to get re- well recovered in time for the game at the weekend and like and I can only speak for myself but when we played Curfin this year my GPS readings were were the highest ever were for the last two years since I got one um, so like to come from playing a championship game the Tuesday and to try to hit your heights that are required to beat them on the Sunday would always be very difficult so if you're getting a, a shot from a wing back which would carry it on it'd be a wing back and he's after covering a good distance like do you, know, it's, do you still have in the legs there in the last minute or two when you were out to choose, playing the Tuesday before? Like, and that does matter. And I thought one key moment there was uh, Don Marley broke in from the left wing, and there was no Henry, was it? Chance. What? No Henry. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Put in from the left side, and there was a touch of a goal chance on, and he just hesitated and popped it to Jamie Murphy. And I thought if they got the goal at that stage, that was a real win a moment. But like that, no, he was fresh off the bench, possibly. You know, possibly not the best moment for him to get that chance. But like, Tune probably did need a major a goal to probably win win that game. Yeah, because it's something we talked about. No, Henry had that chance at at ten nine in front of hmm. the, the goal. 
And then curve in, just keep the ball. It goes back. They work the score. They work the free, and it's it's the turning point, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's massive. Sorry, there, lads. Are you going mute here? The fire alarm's after going. Smoke alarm. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but that was that was a turning point, Gizzy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and to be fair, Noel Henry has been a a, a great player for Toome down through the years, so. Um, it is hard to find fault in him. I thought, to be fair, I thought Shum management probably could have brought him on a bit earlier. <clears throat> I'd rate him. I'd rate him fairly high. So, uh, I would have, if I was Shum, I would have got him on the pitch a bit earlier. Um, and he has look at. We don't obviously. I haven't seen Shum play much this year, and I you don't see what's happening at training, but, um, he was a player down through the years that has been very consistent for them, and I think maybe. He might, if he came on earlier, he might have had a bigger impact. And then there was a couple of guys, uh, Tune were both, well, probably both teams, to be fair, were slow to uh, make changes. Um, and I suppose that's why, because it was so tight, you're a bit wary of making a change that could make things worse, more so than better. But, um, like Seamus Kelly has been a good servant to Tune, didn't come on, I don't think. Uh, Paul Collins came in late, Noel came in late. Gavin Connell didn't come on, you know. Sometimes in games like that, you just got empty the bench and 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 more or less hope for the best. See what happens. But um and Currafin were slow. Like um, Mike came on and made a big difference. Mihal Lundy came on and made a big difference. Martin Farrer probably could have come on earlier. Um and Roland Steed again. You're not at training. I haven't been at the matches. I don't know. But Roland Steed is a player that maybe could have come in there with ten minutes to go. But um, yeah. Another thing was Bernie with with the guys' goal chance for Tune. In fairness to Bernie Power, Bernie Power was excellent yesterday. As as goalies go, uh, his kickouts were excellent. He was solid. Um, he was always available to take the ball. He didn't panic. Even Tune turned him over at one stage in the first half, coming out from goal, and he he still managed to get it to a curve in player. I think for what I remember, you know, he he made life. Even though he was been tackled, he made life difficult for Tune to take, get the ball off him, and uh, he gave a great kick pass up in the air to Dylan McHugh late on, where he was under a bit of pressure, and he just put it, he hung it up out there. It was a perfect pass, even though it looked like it wasn't going to be because he kicked it so high, but it, it was actually a great ball into the the chest of Dylan McHugh. So Bernard Power, I thought, was uh, had a huge impact and was a big factor in Curfin's uh, win yesterday, and he could. He could play a serious role down the line now again for them. Just on uh Tum, it was there's probably opportunities there where they'd feel like probably today it's a missed opportunity. But Eddie, given what happened against Dunmore and how they backed it up with victories against Montbellu and Berna and probably did it chances yesterday, as I mentioned, do you think they'll take some positives out of the year considering they've got themselves out of that hole after the Dunmore defeat. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's the same for every club. Like, your starting point is one place, but as championship progresses, especially when it's five, a five well, they were, they were four group games, but, like, it's a long enough group stage. So when you get into a, a situation there where they were with only one point after three games, like, they will take a lot of positives how they dug that out with a victory against Mobile and, like, a very credible performance against Curfin where... As we're saying, if like if they did get that goal, like they could go on and win it. And just building on, I suppose, what Karen said, I thought actually both both goalies were excellent, uh, with the kickouts. And in a weird way, that nearly contributed to it not being a, a hugely exciting game because they were getting every kick out away. So whoever you know, whoever had the kick out had safe possession after. But yeah, I suppose June will be very satisfied with uh, how they recovered from Dunmore, but they'll probably be a bit disappointed with how they ended up in that situation but like the, the more as Kieran said earlier like if Toom like Toom are type of team to score heavy and the more have shown to be quite a quite competitive team this year so like if you don't score heavy you're always at risk of losing especially when it's a local derby uh, like they would have with the more and a derby match that wasn't seen for the last 20 years like so there was always a strong chance of uh, of a shock there and, and it, it happened so I suppose from the point of view, they'd be happy from where they were after the Dunmore game, but probably disappointed overall. Just one player for Toom who stood out throughout the championship is Rory O'Connor. Uh, excellent again yesterday. Is he worth a go, I call in now, do you think, lads? 
I suppose the, the one thing I'd say about Rory and I've ever seen and Gabe's probably seen him more than I have, but I, I actually think he's class. I actually, I, I suppose I, I know more than Gabe's as a cornerback, like you can appreciate a good, a good one. And, and like he, last year we, we played two in the championship and he got out, Ryan Monaghan got injured with his grind on, on the one attack, but he got out ahead of him. And next thing the ball was in the back of our net. Like he basically just ran, ran through, ran through us the length of the pitch to create the goal chance. And he, he did something similar in, in the first 20 minutes yesterday as well, where he just still into the pitch. So once like he has that athleticism that if he wins the ball out in front, no more than say a Liam Silk, that if he wins the ball out in front, you're you're under pressure yourself going back the way. But yeah, no, he's an excellent now whether he's called a senior caliber, like Gold Air strong strong at the moment. Um probably I, I don't know, would I be the person to give an opinion there, but he'd be definitely worth a, a look in an FBD game. Yeah, because he looked at even even yesterday he did terrific uh Gizzy. Blocking Jack McCabe's goal chance in the first half. Ah, uh, yeah, he's a good player. He's a good player, to be fair, and he's probably been hampered a bit where he's so good to use him as a man marker. And then obviously, if you're a man marker, you tend to find yourself in at cornerback or fullback. So I think ideally, Tune would love to play him at centre back and let him drive forward from there. But uh, he he doesn't get too much op- opportunities to do that because he's usually given a job to do. But um, I I think I think Galway. Uh, we'll definitely be looking to bring in three or four, especially after last year. What happened with Galway? I think they'll look to bring in three or four new players, and he'll 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 definitely be under radar. You would think. So, Kerfin going to win Frank Fox, is he? Um. Well, they're still in it. If they were, if they got bet yesterday, they couldn't do it. But um, I they they have a good a chance uh as anyone to be honest um. They will, they will, they will have to. They'll, they'll probably have to get more out of Martin Farrer and Ronald Steed and Mick Lundy than what they did and Mike Farrer than yesterday. But, um, if they can, then, uh, then why not? Um, it's only, it's only three years ago since Curran were all Ireland champions. So, um, I'm sure Mount Pelu and Mike Cullen were happy enough not to get them in a semi final yesterday. So, uh, I think, I think they have a great chance and, uh, I hope they do. Do you see them being there, there, Ralph Teddy? Absolutely. You can't. You can never rule Curfin out of uh, out of winning the senior county title. But they'll have like it'll, it'll be tough. Whoever comes out from the Montpellier Mike Cullen game, and um, like Mike Cullen and Salt Hill had a, had a great battle at the weekend, and just like it was a serious pace and standard that game. So whoever comes out of Mike Cullen Montpellier will be hard bet. But yeah, it's hard. Like Curfin have a huge chance from the point of view. They do probably, in my opinion, they probably have the strongest bench. And their their opponents, Milltown lads, what they did yesterday, uh, defeating Clare Goal one eleven to sixteen points. Uh, you just can't rule Milltown out, can you, Eddie? No, no, no. It was a great performance by them. Um, the setup. They set up early on that they were going to have numbers behind the ball, and just as I suppose from my point of view, and knowing lads' age, age is out in the pitch. I was kind of concerned for them that they mightn't be able to get the lads ahead of the ball to for the counter attack. But they were well able, and Mike Martin was was outstanding for them, and so was uh, Brennan at wing forward. But like they, yeah, they they were very well set up. Justin Burke and the rest of the management team have been very well set up at the back. They frustrated Clare Galway, and were very, very efficient in possession going forward and wasted very, very little. And when there, there, was, a, there was great knowledge on how, how to play the game from the point of view, when Clare Gawler might get a bit of a, a run on them, they'd start retaining possession. Uh, and one thing they probably had, the big strength they had in the two older lads in the field is they were tall, which like in the first half, it wasn't benefiting them too much because they were the wind was carrying the goalies kick out a bit over their head and Clare Gawler actually coming up better on the break of ball. But in the second half, uh, Milltown just kept going long and high, and the Milltown midfielders were were cleaning it up. And if they weren't, like see Jack Cran and Brennan were mopping up the brakes. How are they still producing this? Because they or Gizzy, if you look at some of some of their older players, Cahill Blake, Kieran Blake, some of these players still going so strong at their age. Like, what is it for you that? That these players still keep giving unbelievable performances for Milton. Yeah, it's 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 hard to know because um 
like uh, Cahal Blake. I, I'm I'm not familiar with with uh, some of the other Blakes, but Cahal like Cahal is my vintage, and um and Cahal won't mind me saying this, but Cahal was never one for minding himself. You know, he's not when and and by that I mean like you have in Curfin the likes of Kieran Fitzgerald who who looked after himself so well, but Blakey. Like uh, Blake, he'd have a point with you, and he'd he'd have the crack. But uh, down to the years, he's just kept turning up and producing for Milltown, regardless of what what kind of shape he's been in, or he's had injuries, he's had a bad back injury down through the years. But he's he's always dogged out, and I've had many a battle with him, and sure I'd have huge respect for him because um, he'd always give it a hundred percent, and when the final whistle goes, he'd just shake your hand and and have a laugh. But um, he's some man to be still going to be able to produce it the way he does um, is remarkable and I have no doubt against Curra Finn too uh, Curra Finn will have their hands full of him because even when he moves in and out uh, he can go in at full forward and when he goes in there he's a handful and he will trouble Curra Finn if that does happen but, but on yesterday to like to turn over Claire Galway and in the fashion they did Won five to eight points at half time. Claire Goy didn't score from play in the opening half. They got a goal from a penalty, three frees and two marks. To just have that discipline that they had yesterday, because when they went down by three points, there was question marks over them, but to still come up with answers. And even in that second half, like there, there wasn't many stages where you felt, felt they were going to let this lead slip. Yeah. Uh, look, Milton still have a strong panel. Like, the older guys are still there and Mike Martin, when we talk about Mike Martin, he's not that old. Uh, Mark here is still there and like all very well able to put the ball over the bar. Um, Brennan has been a super footballer for Milton down to the years and has been a brilliant club footballer in Galway. Uh, and then you throw into the, the, the Mannion and, and Costello and these guys, Jack Grand, the mix. Uh, they have a nice blend of, of youth and experience, do you know? So, uh, I know Curra Finn will go in as hot favourites for that semi final, but it won't be all. Uh, it won't be easy for Curra Finn, uh, and they'll have to work for it. And Milltown, Milltown will be really up for that game. Milltown will give themselves an opportunity. They'll give themselves a chance, and uh, that's they'll they'll thrive in that atmosphere where they'll go in as underdogs, and it'll probably suit them. But Curra Finn will have it all to do, um, and they'll earn victory if they get it. Mike Merton yesterday, Eddie, some of the scores he got were scores like that he was kicking under pressure. It probably was one of the best individual performances in the club championship up this year. Uh, it, was, it was outstanding. And it's funny, uh, like, I played a bit in college with Mike. You could see you could see as the play was developing how he was going to even work his own score. There was a, there was a ball that came from one stage and he was he feigned right but you could see from the get-go it was to bounce off the man so he could go back onto his left and throw it over like like he just his accuracy was outstanding and you believe that like his longevity as the game went on was incredible at the end when i suppose Middletown needed to stretch the play to get it out their own half he carried a, a massive ball down the left wing you now ran it into the corner and out of space so not running out of ideas though he just absolutely smacked it at the clear goal the defender to win a 45 like so like that was a that was a big moment because not a big moment in the course of the game, but in killing the game off because Clogall had put a good squeeze on Milltown prior to that, and like they were under pressure just trying to keep the ball, and he he did a great job of carrying it out and winning the forty five, which took the bit of pressure off them. Felt like it was a big turning point, Eddie. They got it back to uh, one point in Barry Goldrick free one seven to eleven, but Milltown straight away just had to bleed back out to three. Yeah, yeah, but I suppose as probably the last 10 15 minutes, it became a real clear goal. Uh, would try to break Milltown down, and if they got turned over at all, Milltown were straight up the field. And they, I, there was a number 10 in the last 10 15 minutes, was very impressive carrying the ball forward. Um, possibly went into a few tackles if you were a teammate, you'd be telling them not to go into it, but like he was very impressive at breaking lines. And even if the two lads in midfield, the like they were still getting up to support the attack in the last five minutes. I like so, I wouldn't be as familiar with them as as Giz now, but I, as a neutral, couldn't get over the legs they had in the last in the last five or ten minutes. Um, but the, the two of them every time without fail got up in sport. And what you notice about the way Milltown set up is they always had someone fall back to the D very early in the counter attack in Cle- when Clegg would be counter attacking, which gave them great cover from the point of view if it was an early ball and 
They're going to go to using the long ball, to be fair. Uh, anytime they hit Grange or, or uh, Conor Flat early, there, there was always an extra Milltown body back, which just meant that the best clear goal they'd probably get from the attack was, you know, a point or a score, a point really. Like, and that's probably why the two of those marks they took and perhaps the goal chance would have been on if there wasn't a, a sweeper there. But to be fair, I know the goal came from a penalty, but it was it was going to be a goal anyway. Like, you know, it was... Uh, it was a penalty, but Granger was going to stick it in the back of the net had he not been absolutely dragged to the ground. Like. Milton missed a penalty of their own, though, too. Uh, Mike Merton fouled inside the square. Yeah, yeah. It was, and uh, as I was saying, Chief, before you started recording, it was it was one, not so much in as in a penalty situation I've been done for, but I've been done out the pitch for the same foul. So um, when there was a few people around me kind of trying to argue that it wasn't a penalty, um, yeah, it definitely was a stonewall penalty. Izzy, I was on Twitter last night and uh, there was an ex-player when Milltown, whatever, were saying we look forward to playing Kerr Finn. There was a comment, hopefully uh, you score more than three points this time. Um, Obviously, last time you played him in a semi-final, you did hammer them out the gate, uh, four fourteen to two points. But can Milltown buy into this now and kind of use it as motivation because a lot of those players were there at that time? Uh, yeah, and I think the only thing about that, Paul, is that uh, there was a there was a rivalry building between Milton and Curfin. I suppose that time they were probably the two best teams in Galway around that that time, uh, and they they were looking to win Frank Fox, and it just happened that uh, the team we had then added Ian Burke and Martin Farrer and Liam Silk, and we just got very strong all of a sudden over the course of a year and uh, Milton Milton obviously couldn't um live with that uh with that youth and pace that we brought into it. But um that's nearly ten years ago now. Uh I'm sure it's well forgotten about. Um and the teams are more evenly matched, I think Curfin uh, were were just starting out there in, in a bit of a journey you could say, but um I think the teams are a bit evenly matched and the youth that Milton have um, at that age group, we'd say the 22 23 year olds that maybe Curfin don't have the, the youth the Curfin have are probably 18 19 year olds at the minute. Uh, and we'll, we'll need another year or two maybe to really develop. But, um, no, I don't think I don't think that semi final of nine years ago or whatever it was is going to have any influence on. Yeah, there's still certain Midtown lads there that would like to revenge that, obviously, but. Um, I think it's a different Curfin team now. It's a different Curfin team from three years ago to my nine years ago. Like five out of the, there was only one forward out of the six forwards that played in the All Ireland three years ago, and that was Sicey. Um, and and Sicey's old, so uh, <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, it's it's a different it's a different group, but uh, no, Milton, I give Milton every chance. Isn't that the threat though? Milltown have like you look at a lot of club teams, but the in particular, because they have four scoring forwards in Hare, Merton, Banyan, and Costello. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of clubs might only have two scoring forwards. So when you have four scoring, it's hard. It's hard, Mark. Uh, it's hard, Mark. Four to be fair. Um, and then Curriffin are always are always strong at the back. So like you'd have you straight away you have uh three inter county players in Malloy uh. Liam Silk and um Dylan McHugh. So straight away you're going to see that the the battles there are going to be intriguing. So um yeah, it's it's it it's probably going to be up the other end of the pitch where it's going to be one or lost. Can the Milltown defence or that that plan that they've put in place, can that stop the curve in forwards? Um and it depends what kind of what kind of forwards that curve in play. I think I do think Mike Farrer if he doesn't start, he needs to come on a lot quicker. Um, he had a big influence yesterday, and uh, just I thought in the first half, um, and look at it, I was part of management myself. It's hard to get it right, but I thought in the first half we just didn't have enough inside to get the ball into. You know, um, we played a lot on the fringes and outside, whereas uh, Martin Farrell might just offer you something inside with 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 Jack McCabe and I know Sicey does be in and out but if you can get Sicey on the ball out the field and he has a target man inside he'll hit him Um, and I think that's what worked really well for us down to the years of Curfin and it might be no harm if they went back to some of that uh, you don't have to do it all the time but you do need a man inside that can win a ball 
it's just the way the draws went, even after Milltown's result yesterday, Eddie. They're going to be written off, really, going into the Curfin game. Do you give them a chance against Curfin? Well, I suppose the draw is probably going to be written off from the point, point of view, like, it's... You're going up against... Whoever came through there was going to be going up against, we'll say, you know, your Curfin Mobile or my Cullen, like, and, like, we'd have all said from the outset that those are, and a lot of people would have said Saltill are part of that, to be the four best or whatever, and they're the three, I suppose, best teams left in it. But, like, to be fair, you can't you can't really rule Milltown out from the point of view. Mo- there's been an awful lot of close championship matches this year, like, very few hammerings, like, probably Curfin gave Karistan a bit of one. But other than that, everyone has been rel- able to stay close enough to each other. Like, so I, I'd anticipate that Middletown can hang in there Especially like if you're well set up, you you do have a chance of staying in there. So one thing is if Perfin were to score, we'd say two twelve, I think Milltown could be in a lot of bother. Like is in I don't I don't see against it like Perfin are very hard to score against. I don't see Milltown probably scoring more than 10, 11, 12 points. And if as Kieran said Kieran said, it's gonna be up the end the other end, can they keep the score line below that? Uh, but I, I like I don't see it anything like nine or ten years ago. That that game, uh, football has totally changed anyway the way it's played now. Uh, like teams will set up in a way that makes sure they're still in the game coming into the last ten minutes. So I suppose from that point of view, Milltown will definitely be in it. Whether or not they can, you know, match Curfin's quality, especially off the bench, I, I'd have my doubts. But they'll definitely be able to ha- hang in the game to be within it, within shooting distance of it, going down the home straight. There's going to be huge excitement in Milltown over the next few weeks. Uh, Burke County semi final against Kerr Finn. Uh, one game away from the county final for them. But lads, just on Claire Galway, is it a missed opportunity this year for them? Um, I'd say they're, they'd, they'd be very disappointed now. Um, I suppose they're in a building process at the moment, but they would have seen a huge opportunity to break through to semi final stage. Now, I, th- I think as a club, it's going to it's going to come like there's there's some talent coming through there. Probably at the moment they just are light on lads, probably in the twenty four plus age bracket. Like they, I'd say they've only two starters, uh, Darren Hensey and Rohan. They're over twenty four and like they finished the last day with four under nineteens. So they're like they're probably just a bit light on on older heads, which especially when Milton were packing everyone behind behind the play and they were a point or two down like they needed someone just to like Gary Sice would do a curve just come out around the middle just slow it down realise there's no rush there's no rush you have seven, eight, nine minutes all you want to do is work a point because then you'll work the second point and the third point and the other thing about that is when you're facing a packed defence you have to realise nobody really likes defending for a long period of time so if you just have patience you'll eventually break it down whereas I felt Tilgola kind of just they just kept rushing their attacks, which you know they're they're younger players. They probably came from playing young underage football, where teams set up far more traditionally. Um, but it'll come, it'll come with time. Like there's some talent and there's some talent coming behind. Like you've likes of Ian Monaghan and these lads coming in next year. Like um, it's good, but they will be very disappointed. They they did fancy at least getting to a senior semi final this year. You see it as a missed opportunity for them, is he? Um. It probably it probably is, but maybe maybe they underestimated uh the challenge of Milton and maybe for Clear Go they might have been better off getting a salt hill or someone like that, uh where they mightn't have taken the eye of the ball. But um yeah, look at if they're young, they just need to stick at it and, and try and keep a bit of continuity you now and maybe management and stuff like that and build on build on it again for next year because um Success won't come straight away, as Eddie said. They're young; they'll need a bit of time, um. But they need to learn learn from from a game like yesterday, as Eddie said that, like rushing their attacks is probably not the best way to go about playing um a defensive system that Milton might have, you know. Uh, and Eddie's right; teams don't. Every team loves attacking, not every team loves defending. So if you have a bit of patience when you attack, um, you will find gaps or 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 defenders will switch off or, or forwards that are back there will switch off and you'll get you'll get opportunities. So yeah, they just need to learn from that and come back next year stronger again. 
First off, till yesterday against my Colin, it looked like they'd scored the goal at the perfect time. Matthew Thompson puts Saltill up 1-9 to 11 points on 59 minutes and they look like they're in a great position. Mike Cullen rescued two scores, a superb score from Peter Cook and then a fisted point from Paul Kelly to seal the victory by a point. Like This is devastating to take, Izzy. Two years in a row bet by Mike Cullen by a point. Um, yeah, and especially when it's a local derby, then um, it's hard to take. But uh, I think Salt Hill, Salt Hill had an up and down year. Really, they they put in a poor performance against Currafin. Um, and and two two in, if they look over the course of the year, they were probably too inconsistent anyway. But yeah, they had a great opportunity to win yesterday. But um, for Salt Hill, they just need to be more consistent. Like you can't. You can't go out in the first round and get back by Curve in by ten points or so, and then then expect to turn it around a few months later. All right, they nearly did, but um, yeah, they just need to get a bit more consistent, don't they? That was it, and even yesterday, Eddie, it, it actually it didn't feel like for large parts of that game that they were going to actually win it because Mike Cullen were in control for a lot of the game. The goal kind of did come against the run of play. Mike Cullen are keeping the ball, and they get that goal then, but. Mike Cullen still have the answers. Yeah, well, it was really against the run of play from the point of view. It was the defender that gave the hand pass to, I think it was Maher, who played Thompson to stick in the back of the net. But like Saltill set up, no more than say Middletown, they set up. No, listen, every team does it to an extent, but you know, they were they were going to hang in, hang in there and you know, hope that they got what might come their way at the end. Now, Saltill were, were much improved on their area games against Mike Cullen. Like, Finnerty was starting to shoot a bit, a bit better. Like Carl Sweeney was excellent. Like, geez, some just driving forward and the scores he was kicking. And Maher was very good. I suppose the one the one thing from watching Salt Hill over the last two years is like they are large their their progress is largely dependent on how good Finnerty, Maher, Sweeney, and if Tom O'Cullan is out there is going. Now, like they were without Tomo and they're without Evan Murphy to start. Evan came on. Um, but like they're they're two big players for them to be down. Um, they're probably more aligned on their, we'll say they're big players than your Mike Cullen or your Currafin and maybe your Mount Values. So that probably hampers them a bit from that point of view. But like they have plenty of young talent there. So like, you know, no more than a clear goal, their time is on their side. Um, but yeah, they'll be gutted. They'll be absolutely gutted, especially after the county final last year and especially after getting that goal to go two points up, uh, sorry, a point up, like they would have, they they will be, uh, they'll be heartbroken today. How do you come back from that? Um, well, you probably go out last night and you probably go out all day today to forget about it for the first 48 <laughs> hours. And then uh, you probably, uh, you probably try to melt away into civilization for a few months and then probably rebuild again. But I know like they've, like I suppose when you have a few lads in with the county seniors all the time, like it's it's easy for a club to to gather the troops again in the new year, and especially when you're in their situation. Like you always have younger lads coming, and you always have an ambition of probably winning Frank Fox, so they'll have no trouble going again next year and being probably possibly being more competitive next year. There's probably a bit of a hangover from last year and expecting to be in a county final without having to do anything. There was probably a touch of that with them this year. On my calling, Gizzy, it's nearly kind of reminding you of your own team, Kerr Finn. You just always found a way, and that's what my calling did yesterday. They just found a way when it mattered. Yeah, and, and probably the way they play, they play off the cuff a bit, so it kind of suits that frantic finish where like they've just bodies running everywhere. Um, I just saw the clip on Twitter, their last score, but um, they turned over a salt hill attack, and then it's just every man is going here, there and everywhere. So that, that, and I saw them last year playing Currafin and I just thought Currafin were a bit more organized and better in the first half. But when it got frantic in the second half, it just suited my Cullen. And that's the type of game they like to play. And they have the two Kellys coming from deep and a uh, very hard stop. So the only thing for Salt Hill is that it's not a bad, it's never good to lose a game, but I mean, yeah, they got a goal to put themselves up but there was still probably five minutes to go uh, and they got turned over in their last attack so uh, like 
yeah, they'd be disappointed, but it it would be a lot worse if they were four or five points up and they let Mike Cullen come in and 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 beat them by one or two. You know, um, it's there's there's plenty of positives there for them after it, and uh, if they're willing to take the learnings on board, um, I'm sure they'll they'll improve again for next year. It's when you look at the team overall, but you look, Gizzy, they were out Cook and Sean Kelly yesterday and the two of them come back and just give inspirational performances. Yeah, I just saw um I just saw Cook kick the massive score to, to level it. But look that's why they're intercounty footballers and that's that that's the expectation when um in Clarifin we always expected our intercounty players to be our best players, you know, um that's why they're intercounty players. So yeah, they did the business, but that's the expectation, I think, and especially from two type players like Peter Cook and Sean Kelly. Um, that's that's why they're held in such high regard, isn't it? it we talked about depth wise, but Eddie, like Niall Walsh is probably Mike Cullen's top performer throughout the group stages. Uh, probably their top scorer from from play. He misses out yesterday on the starting spot in in that front six, and like that, that's just a scary prospect. Yeah, I know, and, and Niall is a good player, a very good player, and he, he's a serious addition off the bench. And Mike Holden obviously have, a, have an excellent 15, like your Johnny Malone is another huge addition in there. But what I, I probably would say is, Kerfin probably have a more array of choices with huge experience. Like, you were looking at the war, lads warming up, and like there was any amount of all the medals bouncing around there that they could bring on. Mike Holden, right, if Niall Walsh to come on, excellent player. But probably, and I suppose they're playing without me all O'Reilly at the moment as well. He was a very good player. Yeah, but he like, came on yesterday. Yeah, later on, like George, they do have a listen to a t- t- great squad, and like you see Michael Daly coming on for uh, Montpellier. They all, the three of them have great squads, but I, I do think Kerfin probably have the better array of guys. Um, like it, the turnover, Evan Murphy kicked a wonder ball just before the turnover. Uh, it was very unlucky that Salt Hill hadn't didn't get out with it, but. It's a great turnover, and once, like, once my Cullen turn you over in the drive with numbers at you, it's uh, it's very hard to stop them. It's it's just it's a wave of three and four coming at you. And if you're a defender, it's nearly the best you can do is stop the goal and let them hand pass it over the bar. Yeah, you could even see with Carl Sweeney yesterday, he wasn't letting Sean Kelly go because we've seen that mistake from people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually <laughs> have to, like, you have to nearly get the yellow card or just take the black card because. Like if they do get running at you in threes and fours, like it's it's very hard. It is very hard to stop the goal. And like if they do that five or six times in a row, the game you can be able to sight and run into time. And and the one thing they have probably on probably a curve in or mill town is probably the, the huge height everywhere. Like they've, they've very few players below six foot on on that Michael team. Yeah, so the county champions really uh, got out of jail and found a way yesterday against Salt Hill. Um, a huge victory um, for them. They now meet Montpellier My Law in the semi-final. Lads, a question for both of you, um, whichever one of you wants to come in here first, but going on yesterday, have Montpellier My Law went back? Um, I suppose from from watching the game uh, on on video, whatever, on the Gold Age TV, it probably looked, James were possibly a bit more up for it. James came out with great energy, and even when they lost Sam O'Neill and his brother came on, and his brother is a very good player too. They like they just they had a great energy about them, great exuberance about them. And I suppose Montpellier probably struggled for a lot of games to get to that pitch. Like you know, when a team, when when one team is possibly you know more for than the other, it, it might necessarily be you're gone back. You just you're just not at the pitch on a given day. Um, it's like that game could have been lost on numerous occasions. Like. Paul Connery on the 45th minute was coming through and if he put it over the bar they'd have gone 9-6 up and that would have been that, like Montpellier would really struggle the way the game was going to come back from that but unfortunately got turn, turned over and Montpellier grounded out so I wouldn't possibly I suppose in the back of the tune game you probably would start maybe questioning them but like geez, they still have they still have an exception team like. What's your own views on them Gizzy? Um yeah, look at it. I think I think the what happened to them in Roscom at that time has had a bit of an effect on them. Um, I think that you effect, still still think it's having an effect on them. I I think so. Yeah, I think I think they missed a they missed a golden opportunity there, but 
um and just the way it went the way it happened but uh i think you have to give james's credit too i know like a lot of games in Goa in recent times are close or tight, but James are put, doing a lot of work, and I know Neil O'Toole up there, and he has great things to say about Daryl Leonard, um, who's coaching James, and they have a lot of young lads, and they're really positive about the, the youth coming through, and I see Owen Concanon played a lot more this year than what he had in previous years, um, and he's, he's a great lad, Johnny Duane, Paul Conroy, so, like, I suppose... Yeah, you'd be saying Montpellier are going backwards, but you do have to think that James is in fairness are putting in a lot of work uh, and are making themselves a bit more competitive than what they have been the last few years. And there's a lot of work going on there and it's it's shown. Um, so Montpellier will be just happy to be in a semi-final. They'll go in as underdogs against Mike Cullen and it might suit. And uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Montpellier won that game. You know, there was time we went through championships for years where... You'd be written off coming into a count semi final or final because it'd be so bad in a quarter final or a semi final. But I mean, look at who who care what performance you put in the quarter final if you get over a semi final or you win a county final. It won't matter what you did before that. So Montpellier, as Eddie said, Montpellier still have a uh, a good side, um, and they'll 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 really put um my Cullen under pressure and. I wouldn't be surprised if they won that one. Just on James, as you mentioned, Derek, is he great work going on there? But like to get to a quarter final this year after playing in a relegation final last year to stay up, it's 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 a huge improvement. Yeah, um, and I think probably at the start of the year for the likes of James, is that's that's probably the goal is to to win your first championship game or win a game and just get safe. Do you know, try and get a few points on the board. But um, I know or oh, definitely. Talking to Neil O'Toole, there's a lot of work going on. Um, and they're really positive about the young guys they have coming through. So uh yeah, again, no more Milltown, a nice blend of youth and experience. And um I'm sure they they're kicking themselves this morning after after letting that one um slip because no one would have given them a chance and no one would have given them a chance of being in a quarter final at the start of the year. So um yeah, they'll be disappointed this morning. And Eddie, they did respond after Colin Mannion's goal. It looked like that was kind of going to push Montpellier on, but James got back level. Like it was, it was nearly similar to the Mike Cullen Saltill game, the kick around the same stage. But Matthew Barrett just seals it for Montpellier then. Yeah, it was a base score when Matthew, but like as well as James has had, had a few ace up their sleeves with the likes of Finton Clooney coming off the bench. Um, like we were in the same league as them this year, we hadn't even heard sight or sound of him. Like, and like that was a great sub to be bringing on there. So like when you, I suppose you're in that situation and something's gone big against you and you're able to bring on and you've, you have fresh legs that are, you know, able to impact the game. It does give you a chance. But James have been going, like they went very well in the group, I thought anyway. Um, like they bet both Anna down and Milltown gave my Cullen a, a good fist of it for most of that game. So like they were there by, by merit. Um, and as I say, like I, I don't, I wouldn't be writing off Montpellier too much on the back of, of that game. Like it was, again, probably like more like the Curfin June game, where it was it was far more methodical in how it was played. Um, you know, it's going to be very hard for one team to run away with it. Um, so like James is, James, I know James were in the relegation last year, but like they had four goal under twenties over that one year younger. Like Johnny Duane was was abroad for most last year. He came home right for the relegation. Like it's it doesn't take a whole pile of mature maturing of those young lads and Johnny Duane to make to turn you from a the fifteenth or fourteenth best team in the county to you know top seven or top eight. It's probably when you start going beyond top seven, top eight, it gets it gets really difficult. And on Montpellier, it wasn't by no means an unbelievable performance, but lads like to get another game into Michael Daly and Patrick Kelly who came back. And, Yesterday, like that's going to bring them on, you'd imagine. Oh, that's that's huge. Like, and it was when I was watching it, it was one thing I was, I was thinking the whole way through was like you're getting a full game into Patrick Kelly, Michael Daly, more minutes into them. Like, they can they're probably now looking at a say at a scenario where they can actually really impact the semi final. Whereas you kind of felt in that game, you know, they were more like us mere mortals rather than the star players they are. Like, so you know, another game there will get them a lot closer to the level they can get to. 
Montpellier obviously lost to Mike Cullen last year, but is it the perfect draw now for them, Gizzy? Um, yeah, it's just that I, Mike Cullen seemed to have uh, a hold over them. That's the second, that's the second time they've bet them in three years, and I know, I know Montpellier bet them in the semi final the year before that, but. Mike Cullen, from what I remember, did they give away two soft penalties? Um, they were a bit reckless in that game. So, um, yeah, sure, it's evenly matched. Uh, it's evenly matched. It's hard to know who will win it. Uh, I think if it's open and it's frantic, it'll suit Mike Cullen. Um, and if it's a bit more controlled and and slower paced, it might suit Montpellier. But, um, yeah, it's it's a hard one to call. Yeah, so the semi-finals there you have uh Montbellu, Mike Cullen and Kerfin Milton, as you mentioned. Castran and Dunmore McKez, they're safe from the weekend. So um you have Kalanen, Spittle, Lettermore, and Michaels playing in a relegation round Robin. Uh top two in that group, safe, bottom two, um go down. Lads, I don't know where any at the intermediate games of the weekend, but it's safe to say the intermediate championship um delivered again. Um the semi finals now see Kid Connolly and Ilan Aaron and one of Abbey and Court and Shamrocks, but huge drama in that championship over the weekend, is it? Yeah, um and and uh, Kid Connolly are, are still going um like in fairness they're 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 a great outfit because it looked like maybe last year might take a lot out of them losing the, the county final and the, the manner they, they lost it. They didn't perform well in the first half, gave themselves a chance late on and and, and didn't get over the line. But uh, to be back into a semi final again now is a fair achievement. And then you have Mulvey Abbey, obviously, um, who are going to be hard bet. So it's it's going to be interesting to see uh, Miho Brannock's probably would have been favourites. For it and and they're out, so uh, it's 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 wide open. Yeah, Michal Brannock's obviously over the weekend. Roland Oviola and pulled up in the warm up. Uh, for to occur and bust his appendix the week before the game. But lads, I don't know. Did you see the clip? But basically, the Michal Brannock's corner forwards running in. Um, Dennis Farrer, like kind of all good goalkeepers, lets him have one. Um, it's inside the square. It's a clear penalty, but the ref pulls it back for a free. Eddie, I'm sure you've seen it. I have. It was all over my uh, Twitter feed from uh, the Nabrani boys. Uh, but uh, it, not just that, it was picked off the ground inside the 60-yard square straight after. So if the first one wasn't a penalty, the second was definitely a penalty. So it was, yeah, it was uh, It was a bad a bad miss probably for, by the referee, I suppose. Listen, he, he doesn't watch it 10 times over on his phone like the rest of us. So uh, you'd have to probably give him that bit of a benefit of the doubt, but yeah, to be honest, the umpires, whatever about the foul, the umpires really should have flagged for the picked off the ground inside the six yard square. Like, um, but you're listening to all part of it. Brannocks were handed a raw deal with no Fint, Fionton, and no uh, Ron Viola. And like, that's that's how many kickouts that you have to battle for as opposed to a handy high ball that's lofted up for Fionton to catch. Like, which when you're playing someone like Monavay, who are like a very competitive team, very good team, uh, at that level, like you know, you can't be sacrificing that amount of kickouts. Well, possibly sacrificing that amount of kickouts and hope, like hoping to win. It's fair credit that they they were leading for most of the game until the bitter end. Yeah, so one of a advanced there by the skin of their teeth, thirteen twelve heartbreak for Glan again losing an extra time in the quarter final uh, to Court and Shamrocks two ten to two nine there. Um, but just on Ilan Aaron, lads, they have enough challenges as it is, but to think they're in a semi-final after losing like two of their top players in Tyler Farta and Colm O'Brien on, it's it's remarkable how they're in a semi-final. Yeah, it's it's some it's some going out because Colm and Tyler are very good players, like and like the one thing the only thing any any club probably outside of your your top eight senior clubs like we're, we're all tight for numbers if you lose two good lads you're it didn't they might necessarily be your two best lads if you lose two good lads you're straight away taking on water like so to be in their situation uh and to lose them two lads and to be back in the semi-final and like to get off to some start against Calter, like to be back at that stage now is, is some achievement easy who do you see winning intermediate um 
I'd 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 like to see um I'd like to see Kill Connolly when I know when Mike Farrell is involved in one of A, uh, um, but just from from Kill Connolly I would have heard when a lot of the Kill Connolly lads, um, and like in they deserve huge credit because they are picking off a small pick as well. Sure, look, most intermediate clubs probably are, but um, like they they they're definitely fighting the good fight down there. And they're back into a semi final, um, which you, you probably wouldn't have expected. And uh, I I'd like to see them their their neighbours, and I'd like to see them. I'd like to see them win it out. And Eddie, who do you see winning it? Ah, uh, you probably can't. It's hard to look past Monaghan Abbey. I know they haven't probably set the championship alight, but like they they are a very good team. Like you've McDade, then you've Glen Kelly on the freeze. Like which a free taker when you get to this time of year is massive. Like someone that's that is consistent as him and from distance as well. So I'd say they probably, yeah, I'd say they probably will do it. No, I'd say probably Kikani be a close second now. Yeah, so that's the final four in the intermediate championship as well in the relegation. Car Road, Felix Kilrain, um, uh, over the weekend and Kilkern, Tom Byrne defeated Kerfin B. Uh, Mello, uh, won the junior north over Hepford at the weekend and they played the winners of Karen Castle and uh, Clomber in the junior county final. But that's all we have time for on our show, uh, for today. Thanks a million for the, to the lads for coming on.